number of you came to each of our workshops, asked some great questions, made some good comments. Uh, I want to clarify a couple of things, and so as I uh, prepare to do that, I'm going to ask Randy and Gord and Scott to join me on stage. Um, there were a couple of, uh, I want to show you some slides in a minute, but before I do, let me, uh, let me go back to the chronology. So March of 2015, I told you, was a pivotal God moment in our meeting together in San Diego, uh, where Randy was there, and we just sensed this freshness of the institutions and agencies uh, laying down their guard, reducing the silo idea, and rather opening hands and saying, hey, look, what would happen if we just said, what could we bring to the table? So six months later in October of that year, our board met again. Uh, I think Randy was there and Gord was there. And as a result of that, the leadership board wrote a letter to the MB mission board asking them whether they might consider um, broadening their scope of ministry beyond just international overseas, but what if it was global? What if it included every nation in our continent? What if they could take best practices, all the things that we've learned as a great mission agency for so many years already and actually made that available to U.S. and Canada in our church planting efforts. Um, at the same time, we were learning to know what God was doing through C to C and Gord, Gord's leadership and kind of asking them, well, would, might you be open to helping us? And so uh, just in the last two weeks, there were two resolutions that were passed at the Canadian conference. So I'm going to start by showing you those and then introduce these three men, let them each say a word uh, about this. So uh, this happened just in the last couple of weeks. One, a task force would be affirmed to work with MB Mission Board to investigate options for C2C and MB Mission for church planning ministries locally, nationally, and globally. Um, one of the co-chairs, uh, Michael Dick, co-chairs that task force. It's not fully formed yet, but he talked with me yesterday and he said, we want the leadership board on the U.S. side to appoint one or two people onto this task force to help us talk through how we can move ahead in collaboration on this. So we'll be at the table with them. Uh, secondly, uh, they passed one that said that C2C in collaboration with MB Mission be authorized to assist the USMB conference as invited by the leadership board of USMB and be allowed to function interdenominationally in the U.S without any negative impact on Canadian church planting ministries and budget. Um, I know that we don't grasp the, how grand this is, but let me try to paint it this way in a minute. Imagine that, that uh, how old is C2C? How many years? Six years old? Okay, imagine that we, six years ago, we started Mission USA in our, in our country on a national level, and in six years, it grew to where we were able to help facilitate the planting of 200 churches in our nation in at least 18 different denominations. This thing would just mushroom like that under the USMB leadership board, okay? Would we be open, I mean, like this, would, we would be so pumped about what God was doing. Would we be open to releasing them to do stuff outside of the U.S.? Now, that was the question that, that their conference had to grapple with, and they said, yes. This is a God thing. It's not just a Canadian thing. God is obviously at work. There are denominations calling jo uh, Gord regularly saying, could you come talk with us? We need help with church planting. Could you help us? And so they've, because we asked, would you consider working with us, both NB Mission and C2C and the Canadian Leadership Board structure has said to them in the last two weeks, yes, we're open to, to opening the gate to allow a collaboration to work. So now these brothers are here. Just give us Randy start and just each introduce yourself and tell us like how, how do you think this could work? Just a minute or two. What are you offering to us? Yeah. I, I, this is interesting because I think history is repeating itself here. The Canadian Conference was birthed with missionaries going from the U.S. north to Canada, and a church was started in Winkler. And that was part of the discussion. The Canadians said, how can we not respond when our U.S. brothers and sisters are asking for support 
and resource that we want to bless because we've been blessed. And that really is how the gospel works, isn't it? Um, our, uh, our, our relationship with C2C has been collaborative over the last number of years. We're talking now about moving from collaboration to merger. And we're asking how do we bring best practices globally as well as here in North America to bear on church planting and evangelism here locally, nationally, and globally. Because mission really is from everywhere to everywhere. It's changed. It's no longer from the West to the rest. And so that's the, the story that this is, that this is playing into. Yeah. And uh, these two guys um, represent the leaders of a huge, a huge network, yeah. which we pray doesn't just bless our U.S. family, but also blesses our families um, globally. So, Gord, you've been the kind of the lead of C to C. Why don't you grab the mic? Uh, introduce Scott. Tell us what what how he works now. I know we'll we'll hear from him tonight in terms of the Pueblo Church, but just how is he connected with you, and what are you offering to us? Yeah. So our passion is to multiply churches across North America, and with the uh, blessing of our Canadian family, are now moving uh, into the U.S. But it's really important to us. C to C Network is kind of a hundred percent. Mennonite brother. Everyone on our staff, we have 13 full-time staff. They're all Mennonite brother, attended Mennonite church, elder in their church. And so as a Mennonite brother, evangelical and a Baptist network, we do not contact denominations. We don't call people up and say, do you want to work with us? It's only those who choose to and say, we just really love this Christ-centered theology, this grace. That, And so we're, we're seeing that God's using this tiny little denomination in Canada to bless the nation. 23 denominations are actually part of the C2C network today. Uh, Scott was a national director in the U.S. with another network. I called up Scott and asked him if he would consider joining the C2C team. I moved him up to Toronto as kind of my uh, right-hand man, if I could use that language. And, uh, and Scott is now uh, moving uh, to uh, Nashville. And uh, because it's so important to us that we're owned by a Mennonite brother, and I asked Andy Mission, could you be the arm that at least uh, owns C2C in the USA? And so Scott is now on the payroll of MB Mission starting August 1 as a full-time church planning director in the USA to serve primarily MB denomination, but also other uh, denominations in the US. And so is the MB Mission home team that live in the US. Uh, we have our arms uh, out and a towel over arm to say, how can we serve the churches and the U.S. family to advance the kingdom of God? So we're really excited to have Scott uh, full-time on, on, on this process. The National Canadian team has re released me to also work in the U.S. and assist uh, under uh, Don's leadership and supervision and to be a resource to Don as he moves from the church planning director really to the conference minister or national director. National yeah. director. And so our heart is to bring to the table any best practices, resources, fundraising, opportunities to multiply churches, to advance the gospel, to see people reach for Christ. Yeah. Scott, say a word to us about how you see yourself working with us in the U.S. Yeah, really, when you start a church, you've got to get a core group gathered around, people that are willing to get messy, people that are willing to go without structure. And that's really what we're looking for at this front end it are different denominations and groups that say we want to multiply the church and advance the gospel of Jesus Christ into areas where we see great need. We're not sure how to do that. Can you come up alongside us and help us? We would love, it would be our heart's desire and passion that the USMB would be a part of that core group that gathered together during this messy stage where we don't have it all figured out, but would like to come alongside and say, let's work together on some projects. Let's learn from each other, not trying to overcome each other, but learn and come alongside. And so both groups are even sharpened and made better. So that's our goal and desire. As Gord said, it's really that towel of the arm, and that's not just words. That's our posture in humility and love and servanthood, but mostly the passion for Jesus Christ's call for us to go and make disciples of all nations. So I hope that you hear their heart. They're, they're not coming saying, we're going to take over, or we know better than you what's going on. They're saying, how can we serve you? So if you're part of a district, which we all are, and in your district you have a church planting board, 
um, they would be the ones to invite Scott and Gord to come alongside, okay? If your district's board chooses not to invite them, they won't be there at the table. But we just wanted you to know that the resource is now available nationwide, across our nation, a resource that um, two months ago <laughs> was not available. But it's so fresh, and because you may read about this in the Christian Leader or the, the, the Herald, um, we, wanted you to, we wanted to try to explain that. So I hope I haven't created more questions, but I think maybe we've at least helped a little bit to clarify this C to C and how that fits with the national uh, vision, future story, all of that. So we won't take time for questions. At least Gordon Scott will be around. Randy has to leave shortly. Uh, but thank you, brothers, for sharing very much. Thank you. Okay, let's watch a little video about the future story. We need a future story for our MB's own family, as well as the changing American culture. It was time that our conference of churches rethink our effectiveness and cast a new vision. USMB is embracing a new vision. We're calling it the new future story. Help empower each of our local MB churches to reach its full God-given ministry potential within the framework of their evangelical and Anabaptist distinctives. This will be a shift away from traditional denominational structure to much more of a networking structure that will include building a strong national entity to resource and support our local churches and our districts. Focusing on an organic networking of leaders and churches instead of a centralized structure. Zeroing in on just three core commitments that will allow us to have maximum impact. Local churches will be encouraged to engage in collaborative efforts around one or more of our new core commitments. Our core commitments will focus on church multiplication, church planting, and evangelism at the local, national, and global level. So the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in the numbers. Intentional disciple making. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And leadership development. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. USMB will align its resources and structures to equip and serve and resource and network our local churches for ministry. And the question we will often ask is, what is your dream and how can we help? Churches thrive when partnering together in proactive and vibrant relationships with other churches, agencies, and ministry partners. In other words, networking. This synergy will produce greater kingdom impact than possible by churches acting alone. When churches share resources and develop closer relationships, it develops a strong loyalty to a common vision. The network of churches will be inspired to share their stories, strengthening one another through connection and celebration. Working. Networking. Supporting. Dreaming. Encouraging. Resourcing. Helping. Growing. Our USMB identity will remain strong, embracing both our evangelical and Anabaptist distinctives. We can expect things to begin happening soon. It will take a little bit of time to shift from the old to the new. As churches and MB organizations engage with this new vision God has given us, good things will begin to happen quickly. The new mantra of USMB is that we are here to serve churches, primarily in the areas of church multiplication, church planting, evangelism, intentional disciple making, and leadership development. Often asking the question, what is your dream and how can we help?
you to hear from two people that were involved in the process of forming the future story, Dennis Fast, followed by Rich Creepum. If they would come up and just, I've asked them to share just a couple of minutes about their, their involvement in the process, uh, what they're excited about regarding the future story. All right, thank you. I was privileged to be part of the, uh, the first round of discussions that I identified earlier this morning as the group of 40 plus. So I got to meet with that group in Kansas City and Phoenix area, and it was a joy to get together with uh, veteran leaders and new leaders and to just see, the, 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 see what happens when you begin to dream together and think beyond, uh, without limits, without a budget in, in place, and just begin to think together, and that was really a joy. And then my second round was the third round, which was after there was a writing team that put together um, the future story. I got to be part of a smaller strategy team that then met for sev met several times with our consultant to try to bring a little more focus and shape to the direction of uh, this future story. I'm, I'm excited about it. A uh, number of the things that we dreamed about in that strategy team did not necessarily come uh, to be part of what you're reading today. But it's okay. Uh, I'm excited about a number of things. One would be the, the focus on the local church. We've always believed in the local church. We, we know that Jesus said, I will build my denomination. I mean, my church. <laughs> the local church. He's going to build his church. And, and to focus on that in a fresh way is exciting. I'm, a, I'm excited about the, 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 as I stated in the uh, seminar, the, the open hand that, we, that we're bringing to this, to, to say, let's see what God is going to do on a number of levels. It's going to be exciting. We're going to trust the wind of the Spirit to blow among us. And so that, that is exciting for me. Um, my generation likes things a little bit neater and tidy. We like, uh, we like propositions. I like propositions, at least. And so part of the excitement for me is to is to step into this new framework of what we're calling networking and see how God begins to do new things. And I'm looking forward to, to being part of that. Some of that, uh, given my season of ministry, is probably going to have to be a little bit on the sidelines and watching that. But, but I'm committed to, to stepping in at every opportunity that I have to be part of that and uh, to be part of a, a network in, in my community as well. So uh, those are the things that excite me. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I had an opportunity to be, have a small part in it. Thank you for those of you who trusted me and us to, uh, to speak into it. I missed the very first uh, summit uh, because of special conditions that were happening at Fresno Pacific, under which I became suddenly the president, very suddenly. But I was able to be involved in sub subsequent summits, and I had the privilege of serving on the strategic planning body, whose work then went to a writing committee that fashioned things that came back full circle to, again, a large set of people who reviewed what was developed in light of their open-ended, and I want to emphasize that, this was not a predetermined process, and that's what Dennis and I and all of us involved in and really loved about it. We simply set out to say in a post-Christian, post-modern, post-denominational world, how do we be and do the Church of Jesus Christ? How do we be that church in a healthy and authentic way? And how do we do what that church is supposed to do in this new environment? There was no arguing that we were in a new environment, right? That was a given. We just have to figure out what we're going to do. The process, and I would describe it this way, I love the process because the process modeled the desired outcome. The, what you are looking at here is a process we just went through to get to this point. And I can tell you, it's a faith walk, so don't expect to know the long-term outcome right now. God is good enough not to tell us that. It scared the hooey out of us if we knew what that really looked like. He says, no, just take the next step. And if you'll do that, 
I'll show you what to do next. And that's what this process did, and that's how we got to where we are. So that's why we didn't ask you to vote on this. We really believe that we are simply asking you join a faith walk that some have already begun, and now we invite you into that faith walk, and it's going to feel as uncertain as we were when we were going through this process. But it feels good, brothers and sisters. Let's walk. Thank you, Rich and Dennis. At this time, if I could have our uh, leadership board, uh, all the members stand, please, and I want you guys to stay standing. Look around and see who the leadership board is made up of. And on behalf of that, I just want you guys to know, everyone here to know that as, as board members, we are humble and we're grateful to serve our members, our pastors, our district ministers, and our agencies. And uh, we look so forward to what our future comes. Stay standing. I want you, in, in 2013 is when we started talking about what should we do different. And it was so much bigger than what our board was. And, and we said, we, we've got to get more people involved. And so we talked to our district ministers, we talk to our agencies and say, who are our leaders? Who can we talk to about what we can do different? And God bless us with a great group of people. And all, but everybody that was involved in any of these meetings, would you stand please? I think as things progress, we all started to see God is really in this. And I think, I hope everyone has felt today, and I think through our workshops, I hope we've been able to answer questions. There's still a lot of things we don't know. But we do trust God that he's going to carry us through on this. And I guess we as a, as a group would like to see an affirmation from the rest of you to stand with us and to tether with us as we go forward uh, with our future story. And that we do press forward uh, as we go in the future. So if you would stand in affirmation with that. God is so good. Um, I was talking, just stay standing. Um, and I'll have Aaron come up and talk. And I was just talking with Terry. Huh, um, I don't know, it was three or four years ago. We, got, we were in a, at Fresno at a meeting there, and our planes got canceled. And uh, Terry and I were unfortunate our planes got canceled. He, and so we sat there, we had like three, four hours. And we were just talking about how frustrating it was with all the silos that we had. And, and you know, we said, you know, it's so big, you know? And I, I can remember shaking my head and say, well, we can pray about this. And if we could take down those silos, it would just be great, what, what could we do? And this happened. Uh, and we, we kind of, we said, man, we, it's hard to believe. And I don't know why it's so hard to believe, but it is happening. And so we just ask for your, as a board member, we cover your prayers. And we have a long ways to go yet. And I hope with you standing that you're committed to this and that we don't just stop today, but that we're committed to what our future story will be. Aaron, can you give thanks for this? If we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Box. I serve at North Park Community Church in Eugene, Oregon. For the last two years, it's been an incredibly humbling honor to get to be a part of your leadership board and uh, to be walking this road with so many amazing, godly leaders in our midst. And I'm normally a stoic person. I don't raise my hands a lot in worship or anything like that. But I think in this moment, I'd just like to invite you as a symbol of just an open hand recognizing uh, that this is not our story. This is God's story. He's the beginning and the end. We have the privilege of being characters uh, in that plot line that he's written. But 
Uh, if, you, if you're comfortable, just I invite you to hold your hand out just as a, a posture of, of, as individuals and collectively, that we come before God open-handed. And let's go before our Father in prayer. Father, you are the beginning and the end. You are the author. It's amazing to see the way you work through your people. It's amazing to understand the stream, the story, the heritage that we stand in together. To look back and to see the amazing ways in which you've been at work. And God, it's so exciting to look forward and to think about the new things you might be doing in among us. We want to stand before you in this moment today in a posture of openness surrendering everything that we are as individuals as leaders, as churches as a group of churches we come to you with an open hand recognizing you are the author of the story and we want to in a fresh way commit our resources, our lives to participating to the fullest capacity in your story Jesus, we thank you that you've gone ahead, that you are a compass. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you have empowered us. We ask for your leading, for your wisdom. Father, we ask that you would empower us as a family of churches, as your people, to be effective in new ways, in developing young leaders who are godly and passionate and effective. Father, would you help us to do a greater job of discipling people into maturity in their walk with Christ? Would you empower us to multiply as your people and be a part of your advancing kingdom in new ways? We ask your leadership we ask for your power in a fresh way. We ask that you would enable us to be faithful to what you have for us. We ask you would help us to remain with open hands. We love you. We trust you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.